Beta-glucan is becoming more and more recognized as a valuable tool for support of the immune system. Studies have been conducted on both animals and humans. The research is plentiful, and the MOA, or Mechanism of Action, is well-defined, and its effectiveness and safety are well-documented. As we learn more and more about our health, nutrition, and beta-glucan's role in supporting the vitality of the immune system, scientists have extended their research to children. Today, we will meet Dr. Donald Cox, a 13-year veteran of clinical research with beta-glucan, and discuss some past studies with yeast beta-glucan and the amazing results. He will detail three substantive trials that have been conducted with children. Beta-glucan's excellent safety record and its rating by the FDA as GRASS, or generally recognized as safe, has led to an increased desire to find more areas of use and benefit. These three studies involve more than 700 children in double-blind research in countries scattered across the globe. They look at acute respiratory infections, allergies, and overall health and recovery from a wide range of illnesses. The results in all three studies are consistent and significant. Beta-glucan gives proven immune support to children, and it's safe. Yeast beta-glucan has so much potential, not only for cancer patients, but for healthy individuals who want to maintain and improve that health. Our children are our future. Their health is in our hands and in the hands of the researchers. Pay attention today and every day for ways that you can improve your life and the lives of your families. Now, let's meet Dr. Cox. Dr. Cox, thanks so much for being with us here on for the Immune me. Response. Uh, uh, I've read through your CV and it's quite impressive. Tell us a little bit about uh, your involvement with beta-glucan and, uh, and what you've been up to the last few years. Sure. Well, I've been working with the yeast beta-glucan for about 13 years. Uh, started off early on uh, developing the clinical research program. So, of course, we started looking at the ingredient in a, in a range of adult populations, uh, looking at the safety and efficacy of the ingredient. And uh, over the last few years, uh, we've really been focusing more on more unique populations. Uh, for example, today we'll talk a little bit about some of the children's studies that we've done and how the yeast beta-glucan uh, helps to maintain the health of children uh, during uh, challenging periods uh, of the year. Um, we've also been looking at uh, various forms of the yeast beta-glucan and how that uh, impacts the overall uh, efficacy. So you come to us from the state of Minnesota, where it's a good bit colder, maybe have some more challenges to, to the immune system and to health, uh, maybe even especially for children. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, our, um, our cold and flu season usually starts sometime around September, October, and goes through April, uh, which coincides with the time when we have snow. <laughs> okay, so you have a, a couple of weeks of summer and then... Uh... We do, and we enjoy both weeks of summer. <laughs> Very good. Well. Um, Tell us a little bit about, uh, I know you see you've got a, a PowerPoint program for us. Uh, if you want to just jump into that and then we'll, sure, we'll follow sure. up with questions as you, as you go along. So I thought I'd start with a little introduction telling you a little bit about the, uh, what makes the yeast beta-glucan unique uh, and um, what uh, drives us to have an interest, an ongoing research interest in the ingredient. Uh, and then we're going to uh, step into some studies, some specific studies on children. Um, focusing on, on how the yeast beta-glucan helps to maintain the overall immune health of the children. So there are a few things that, that um, make us very, very, I guess the word would be proud of the science, the state of the science behind the yeast beta-glucan. Uh, among other things, we have a very well-defined mechanism of action. We have a significant portfolio of clinical research now demonstrating the uh, efficacy, how well it helps to support the health of people, uh, and also a very strong safety profile because this ingredient, like a lot of ingredients that we use uh, in foods and supplements nowadays, uh, gets taken on a daily basis. We call that chronic consumption, so you have to demonstrate safety. And I, and I like to highlight the safety of this particular ingredient, the yeast beta-glucan, uh, as we proceed. <clears throat> so let's start with a little bit of a description on the, uh, the, the mechanism of action. So um, in this one slide, I'm going to summarize about 30 years of research and quite a number of peer-reviewed publications in, in uh, leading scientific journals. For, for example, uh, in this slide, uh, we're paraphrasing some results from the uh, research published in 2004 by Hong et al. Uh, in the Journal of Immunology. Uh, we understand how the product works, how it gets into your gastrointestinal tract, and what it does there. 
Uh, when it's consumed orally, the yeast beta-glucan makes its way into your small intestine, and there's some immune tissue there called gut-associated lymphoid tissue. And um, the beta-glucan particles are actively picked up by immune cells there called M cells in a region called Peyer's patches. And they get transferred across the epithelial region uh, and into your uh, circulatory system, so your blood, your lymph, uh, and there are immune cells there, uh, primarily uh, the ones we're interested in for today's talk are, are macrophage cells, monocytes and macrophages. Uh, and they actually pick up, they digest, or consume or eat, a process called phagocytosis. They eat the beta-glucan and then uh, circulate throughout the body and uh, make their way into various immune organs. These could be your, your lymph, these could be your, uh, your bone marrow, etc. Uh, and once they're in, the, uh, in these organs, they begin to break down over a period of a couple of days. And uh, the yeast beta-glucan, when it breaks down, uh, forms a bioactive fragment, and this fragment is actually released by the macrophage cell and is picked up by other immune cells called neutrophils, primarily. And uh, neutrophils are important because they're a very abundant immune cell in the body. Uh, and perhaps the most important takeaway from this slide is that when um, the neutrophil has the beta-glucan, the yeast beta-glucan on the surface, uh, it actually changes how the neutrophil responds to its environment in two key ways. It changes how the neutrophil migrates, a process called uh, chemotaxis, kind of a navigation system. Uh, and it allows the yeast beta-glucan containing neutrophil to more easily find its way towards a, a non-self cell. And uh, when it encounters a non-self cell, uh, it knows what to do with that cell. And a non-self cell is anything that doesn't belong in your body, uh, something that's not, not a natural component of your body. And um, once the neutrophil with the yeast beta-glucan on the surface encounters that cell, it uh, helps to remove that cell from the body. So that's a, a quick uh, summary of the mechanism of action. So let's, uh, if we're okay to keep rolling here, sure, absolutely. we'll just talk a little bit about uh, some of the You have the floor, sir. All right, some of the consistent clinical results. Um, we have a significant portfolio of research. We've been doing research on the beta-glucan, the yeast beta-glucan now for about 13 years or so. And uh, we've pretty consistently demonstrating that it helps to maintain and improve a person's overall physical health. Uh, and this can be during periods of, of challenge. So for example, we all need a, a stronger immune system, a healthier immune system during, during the cold and flu season, uh, which ranges typically from September, October till about uh, April or so uh, where, I, where I live. Um, and taking the yeast beta-glucan helps to maintain your overall physical health, helps to prevent you from um, encountering or from, from your a lack of ability to handle encounters that occur every day. So every day we're all uh, bombarded with, with various health challenges. Uh, your immune system normally uh, handles those fairly well. Uh, the yeast beta-glucan helps you to handle them even better. Uh, so it, it definitely helps to, to support the immune system. Uh, over the years, we've done a range of clinical studies. Uh, we've typically, in our early days, did studies with uh, your no, always a normal, healthy population. But to start with, we did a adult population. So we looked at lifestyle stress. We looked at physical stress. Under physical stress, we've done a number of uh, um, uh, clinical studies looking at marathon runners. So. We know from, from research that post-race uh, marathon runners are more susceptible to upper respiratory tract infections, for example. And uh, including the yeast beta-glucan in their diet uh, help to reduce the incidence of these upper respiratory tract infection symptoms post-race. Uh, we found that, uh, we did that first one uh, back in, I think, around probably 2007, 2008. We followed it up in 2011 with a second marathon, a larger marathon study, and we saw similar results. Uh, and we've continued to explore uh, the benefits of the yeast beta-glucan on any form of exercise, physical stress-induced stress, uh, including um, looking at various immune biomarker responses uh, against uh, exercise-induced stress. Because believe it or not, we know that when we exercise, we're, we're generally healthier. But if you over-exercise, over-exert yourself, you can actually temporarily suppress your immune system, which opens the window, the opportunity for uh, challenges, for, for potential uh, uh, health challenges, including the beta-glucan in a, in, in a regimen and in the diet for people that, that overexert themselves, perhaps high-performance athletes or just the weekend warrior that tends to overdo it, um, really helps to maintain the health of the people 
uh, long term during during the um, uh, the, the exercise and uh, during the post recovery period that occurs during exercise. Talking about these athletes, would the doping testing that they do would that ever be an issue with beta glucan? Would that show up, or would it be something mm -hmm. that they would I be dealing with? I understand. Uh, no, the um, the yeast beta glucan is, has been cleared by informed choice. Uh, an informed sport, so we know that it's an ingredient that uh, does not violate any of the WADA, the mm -hmm. World Anti-Doping Agency, uh, criteria okay. for, for uh, supplements. So it's a very safe ingredient for, for use by athletes as well. Well, the other thing that I was just going to ask you, you, you've stressed uh, yeast beta-glucan. Did you, have you done studies with the other uh, glucans that come from other other materials, the uh, mushroom or yep, we've, burnt oats or that kind of thing? We've done some, there's a preclinical study, which means an animal study typically, uh, published uh, back in 2009 where we compared the yeast beta-glucan against various sources of mushroom beta-glucan. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And it was a, a mouse survival study and we actually looked at the um, the survivability of the animals when taking the beta-glucan uh, and the, the different forms of beta-glucan and the yeast beta-glucan was by far at least double, if not more, uh, superior in terms of the survivability of the animals long term versus the, the mushroom glucans. So there is some published research out there and we'll okay. do some additional research as well. Okay, we didn't mean to derail your, oh, that's your train okay. of thought there. That's but. Okay. So just getting back to a little to some of the discussion on some of the clinical studies, we also have a lot of uh, lifestyle stress studies. Lifestyle stress, for example, um, thinking of some of the populations we work with, might be um, just people who are, are under high stress because of excessive travel, long hours working, et cetera, or career choices. We have one study where we looked at uh, medical students, fourth year medical students, and we demonstrated that consuming the yeast beta-glucan over a 90-day period helped to maintain the um, health and wellness of these uh, medical students. Uh, of course, this was all medically verified uh, in that study. Uh, we've also done study, we have one published study where we looked at just women. Uh, this was a, a, another 90-day study. We had 90 women in the study. Uh, and we showed that um, women taking the product tended to be healthier uh, over the course of the study than uh, people taking the placebo. And by the way, it is important to say uh, that all of these studies are randomized, double-blind, mm -hmm. placebo-controlled. These are all the, the, the gold standard study. Uh, more recently, uh, we've been focusing on more unique populations. So for example, we've done some studies with some what we'll call healthy aging, just people that are normal uh, aging people. Uh, and we've also done a number of studies now with children, three separate studies with children, and we'll talk a little bit about those studies in particular uh, today. Good. So uh, one area that I like to highlight a little bit is just talking about the, the safety data. Uh, as I said earlier, these, these products, a lot of uh, uh, health ingredients that are used in supplements or other products are taken continually, so taken chronically, uh, that is day in and day out, and you want to make sure that these ingredients are safe. Um, with the yeast beta-glucan, we published the safety data back in 2007 and uh, have done a number of um, toxicology studies to demonstrate the safety of the ingredient, both for what we call uh, subchronic or even chronic uh, consumption, acute consumption, which is when somebody takes a very high dose uh, at one time to make sure that it's safe. And we've also uh, demonstrated and, of course, maintained uh, observations of safety throughout all of the human clinical studies. So it's a very safe ingredient. Uh, one th a question that probably comes up with our viewers with respect to safety is that of interaction with either other supplements or medications they may be mm -hmm. on, those kind of things. Right. Uh, we haven't had any reports of any um, unsafe interactions uh, with the yeast beta-glucan that, that we're aware of. So uh, if people ever have a concern, uh, we always suggest to them that they speak to their healthcare professional. That's just a good thing to do if you have any area of concern, if you have a particular uh, health condition or, or status, um, you, you definitely want to just check with your healthcare professional. Well, do you know whether or not the FDA has a position on the, uh, the safety of this compound? Or? Uh, with the yeast beta-glucan back in, in 2007 and 2008, we went through the process called generally recognized as safe, mm -hmm. uh, where we, um, of course, we, we put a panel of experts together, medical doctors, toxicologists, to review the safety data that we had on the ingredient. Uh, we also took the second optional step, which was, which, which was to send our data in to the FDA for review, and they responded that they had no objections at, the, at that time. Uh, and to date, of course, still no uh, concerns, but they had no objections to the, uh, the data on the, the yeast beta-glucan. 
All right. Well, let's uh, let's roll through and begin to talk a little bit about uh, some of the studies. Uh, in particular, today we wanted to focus on the children's studies. So I'm going to talk about um, three studies in particular. Uh, the first one had uh, 310 children. These were three to four year old children. Uh, the study was done in Beijing, China, uh, and it was children consuming a milk-based beverage that contained the yeast beta glucan <clears throat> and other ingredients, or just a, a, a milk. So the milk was the perfect placebo to use in this, the control product, mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about that one first. The second study was with 256 children. That was done uh, here in the Americas, in South America, uh, and it was with children, again, consuming a milk-based beverage that contained a, a, a several ingredients, one of which was the yeast beta glucan. Uh, and we looked at um, a range of what we'll call uh, allergic uh, manifestations or allergic events. So this could be typical airborne allergies or skin-based allergies like eczema. Uh, uh, and again, it was versus a milk control uh, product. And then the final study that we'll talk about today was with just the yeast beta-glucan alone uh, in a water-based beverage. We actually had a sachet with just a little sweetener added to it that was added to water, mixed, and the children uh, consumed it. Uh, these were one to four year old children, and um, they had either a, 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 a what we call the placebo, which was the uh, sweetened water by itself, or they had the um, water based beverage with the yeast beta glucan alone. So let's start talking about uh, some of these studies. So the first study here, it's a fairly lengthy study, 310 children, three to four years of age, it's 28 weeks, so roughly seven months long. Uh, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, uh, and this formula contained uh, the yeast beta-glucan, some prebiotic fibers, uh, and uh, the or the milk uh, as the control. And in this study, uh, we showed that the multi-component formula containing the yeast beta-glucan, that the children had fewer acute respiratory infections. Uh, and the way to read this particular slide, uh, I can see that it's just a little bit uh, can be confusing for people, but we're looking at the number of respiratory infectious episodes that the children had uh, versus the placebo. So taking the multi-component formula or the placebo, and we see that uh, more children had zero infectious events when they were in the, the uh, yeast beta-glucan containing uh, milk-based formula versus the uh, control of, of milk only. And then when you look at it and you read across that table and you see, well, how many children had one, two, or three uh, respiratory infection episodes, you'll see that they had fewer of these episodes when they had the milk component formula, excuse me, the mul when they had the multi-component formula containing the yeast beta-glucan versus uh, the milk alone. So they remained healthier during the course of the study, and that was uh, statistically significant. Now children do get ill, they do get colds. Uh, I think all of us are, are familiar with that, that have children, uh, and sometimes these, these illnesses come on quite, quite quickly. So during the course of the study, which was uh, roughly seven months long, uh, when children did get any kind of an uh, acute respiratory infection, the duration of that, ep of that uh, illness was shorter, almost by a day, for the uh, multi-component formula, milk formula, containing the yeast beta-glucan versus the control of milk. You'll see 3.5 days on average for the yeast beta-glucan containing milk uh, formula group versus the milk alone group where it was 4.3 days uh, in length. Finally, uh, an important measure for uh, children is how often they're able to attend uh, their daycare or their school. Uh, obviously, if, um, if a child is sick, that impacts the entire family. Somebody has to stay home and take care of the child, and we all do that, of course. But um, the, with a healthy child, they can go to daycare, they can go to school. Uh, and you'll see here a similar layout to the that first slide that I showed, that the children um, had fewer missed days on average when they had the milk-based formula containing the yeast beta-glucan versus when they had the control of milk alone. And you can see if you read across that table, uh, the children that had zero episodes of, of missed days was higher for the, for the milk uh, containing the yeast beta-glucan versus the control. And also uh, for those that missed two, three, four or more days, you'll see that it was uh, significantly lower and that was uh, statistically significant. So <clears throat> has anyone tried to quantify the, uh, the financial impact of lost days at school and, and those kind of things? Has that been something we, you've There might with? be something in the publication uh, on that, but I, I don't particularly remember that event, if they, if they calculate that or not. But obviously it would sure. uh, have, a, have an impact there. 
What effect does the second ingredient in the cocktail that you used have, uh, irrespective of the beta glucan? Sure. The second ingredient uh, is a group of prebiotic fibers that were included, and their role is to help to maintain the digestive tract health, the gastrointestinal tract. And there's a lot of research out there showing that these ingredients do have a beneficial effect on the digestive health uh, of, of people in general and children in particular. Okay. So let's roll on and talk a little bit about uh, our, our second study here. This one had 256 children, one to four years of age, and it was in a daycare setting. Uh, and this particular study was done in Brazil. Uh, it was 28 weeks in length, roughly seven months. And it was, again, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled. Uh, it contained a, the same composition as the last study, a multi-component formula that had the, uh, the yeast beta-glucan, the prebiotic fibers, and um, DHA, uh, and this was versus a control of milk. And interestingly, uh, this product uh, in both of these studies was provided for the children three times per day. So over the course of three um, consumptions of this product, they got the entire dose of the healthful ingredients that were included. So let's talk just a little bit about this study. So what we'll, we will refer to as the formula-fed group, you'll see it as FF here on the slide, you can see that they had fewer episodes of what we'll call um, allergy-related uh, conditions. So these might be pollen-based allergies. Uh, they could also be uh, eczema or urticaria, uh, which are skin-based uh, allergies. And you'll see that the children that consumed the uh, milk product having the additional healthful ingredients, the yeast beta-glucan, the prebiotic fibers and such, had fewer episodes uh, of these um, allerg allergic events. Uh, versus the control of milk. Now, milk by itself is obviously a very healthful uh, um, ingredient or healthful uh, food for children. Uh, adding the yeast beta-glucan and the other ingredients to the milk, uh, as we can see here, has added benefits. And this was a, a statistically significant outcome showing that it had a, a lower overall hazard ratio for having these allergic events, which just means a lower incidence of the typical allergic events. So with that, I'm going to move on to our third study now, uh, and we're going to talk about uh, a study with a so 12-week study, so roughly three months. Uh, this study had 156 children aged one to four years of age, and again, is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study. The primary outcome for this study was for a pediatrician to observe the health of the children uh, after consuming the yeast beta-glucan. And this uh, study had the yeast beta-glucan added to a sweetened water product, and uh, so there was only either the sweetened water as the placebo, and it was just pure cane sugar uh, solids that were added to the water, or that same composition plus the yeast beta-glucan. Uh, and we're looking at the observing the overall, overall health of the children during the course of, of uh, the three months. The secondary outcomes here was to look at the typical range of um, illnesses that children get. So these would be your typical upper respiratory tract infections, but also any other common illness that a child would get because they don't only get colds, they don't only get respiratory infections. They'll get uh, conjunctivitis, uh, obviously commonly known as pink eye. Uh, they get ear infections, they get strep throat, a range of illnesses. So we had the pediatrician observe uh, the outcomes for any of these other uh, common ailments for young children as well. So the children either received the placebo, which was just the water-based beverage uh, with a little sweetener, or they cons consumed the yeast beta-glucan. And they had it at either 75 milligrams per day or 35 milligrams per day. And um, the study was conducted at a hospital daycare center, uh, and all of the symptoms that the children had any time they felt any kind of an illness, uh, that obviously the, the parents would, would report this to the pediatrician, and the pediatrician would uh, examine the children during the course of the study. So overall in this study, children taking the yeast beta-glucan uh, water-based beverage were significantly healthier. 62% of the children consuming the water-based beverage that had the yeast beta-glucan in, in the product remained healthy during the entire 90-day study, so they didn't get any illnesses, whereas only 15% of the control group uh, remained healthy. Uh, put another way, 85% of the children in the control group had some kind of ailment during the course of the study, and uh, less than 40% of the children uh, in the um, yeast beta-glucan group uh, had any kind of an illness.
as we said in the, uh, early on, no matter what you do, children are periodically going to get some kind of ailment. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what they do. Uh, and, uh, the Especially children, in close quarters with a lot of others. Yes, they do. They're, they're all playing they share them. And, and touching each other, sharing toys and, and other uh, implements. Uh, and uh, so I think that's just uh, having a strong immune system helps to uh, reduce the frequency of, of ailments with those children, but they do uh, occasionally uh, get sick. Using uh, this slide, we can see that the children taking the yeast beta-glucan had two-thirds fewer upper respiratory tract infections during the course of the study. So on average, the control group had, and, I, and I'm gonna round off here, the children in the control group had about 1.5 uh, illnesses per child, whereas in the um, 35 milligram group, so they, they only had 0 0.5 on average um, respiratory tract infections during the course of the study. So um, they had one, only one third as many illnesses as did the, um, the, the group taking the control product along, alone. Uh, the yeast beta-glucan had uh, other effects, so in terms of the number of days where the children were ill, children on average uh, in this study in the control group had a roughly nine uh, days where they had respiratory tract infection symptoms during the course of the, of the study. It was only roughly three days for the children in the 35 milligram group. So overall, the children remained significantly healthier in this study for those that consumed the yeast beta-glucan. And that's consistent across all three studies. Uh, the first two studies had a multi-component formula that contained the yeast beta-glucan, and the third study here um, had only the yeast beta-glucan ingredient, showing that the, the immune response, the immune health that the children, uh, that we observed with the children, uh, was likely due to the yeast beta-glucan. So, summarizing what we've spoken about uh, today, um, the yeast beta-glucan provides proven uh, immune support for children. Uh, we have a science-based ingredient, uh, a well-defined mechanism of action. Uh, it's an ingredient where we know that when people are consuming it, we know what it should be doing. We have a very good understanding of how it works. That's through many years of research. Published safety data, the safety data is very strong, um, and uh, clinically supported immune health benefits. So we've uh, we've done our homework uh, over the years uh, doing clinical research with this ingredient. Uh, and obviously we did many, many um, studies in adults before we decided to do any, still any uh, studies with children. And children in particular will benefit from taking the yeast beta-glucan. Uh, uh, according to the data that we've shown today, it reduces the incidence of respiratory infections. Um, it um, helps to, to lead to shorter duration of colds for children when they do get ill. And uh, one of the benefits there, an economic benefit as you pointed out earlier, is that uh, the children will have fewer missed days of school or daycare, which means uh, less of an economic impact on the family. Very good. Well, <clears throat> uh, I know everybody's concerned about their children being healthy. And uh, hopefully the result of the work that you've done, the studies you've done will lead to uh, some products coming down the pike that, that we can use uh, within the market mm -hmm. to, uh, to help children maintain uh, healthy immune systems. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very important and very exciting. Um, thank you so much for being with us here thank on you. the thank Immune you. Response and me. hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to talk to you again sometime All real right. soon. Thank you very much.